Hey, hey, hey. So as you're looking at this, what do you see? A, my, a mad, mad scientist? So what is our topic going to be about today? Our objective is about, wait for it, experiments! So no, we're not doing anything exciting like the mad scientist, but we are going to be talking about experimental design in statistics. So turn to your page 10 of your notes. Now, in statistics, when we talk about um, experiments, we have two um, type of main variables. They're referred to as the explanatory and the response. And just like in other math classes, explanatory is your independent variable and your response is your dependent. So basically your input and then your output your final results now that's just general what um ge that's basically general very general for math and gen um in general oh wow find another word yard bro okay but i want to know about specific types of um studies that are done in statistics so our next question is what is the difference between the observational study and experimental um and here observational there's no treatment given to the individual you're just going to observe so like for instance if i want to there was a movie out in which this um this producer literally watched this young man from ages to like four to teen well that would be an idea of an observational study because all he did was basically observe him the entire time and yes he made a video um, as he transitioned through life but that's a perfect example of observational experimental treatment is imposed and that's the big word and that is an s treatment is imposed um, for example you're given medicine you're given some type of an exercise program you're um, put you're, they're putting glasses on you to see if there's a difference when it comes to an experiment, whenever you have a controlled experiment, you have cause and effect. So you guys have seen this before, the idea of how does distracting, distracted driving affect a person as they're driving. Well, they have simulators for that now. It's not like you're going to go out and say, okay, yeah, drive. Now, please text and drive. Oh, heck no. We're saying we're going to put you in a simulator and we're going to have you give your complete attention to your drive. And then all of a sudden we're going to have you text and drive and compare your reaction times. That would be an experiment. And yes, that would be an idea of a controlled experiment. The treatment that's imposed in that particular situation is having a person physically do the driving. And the reason it's controlled is because you had them do the driving um, with the um, while texting the other without texting but remember ladies and gentlemen he was not on the streets he was in a simulator now let's go ahead to problem number 46 read that so the question is is this an observational um, study or an experimental as you can see it is an observational why because here then they asked about the cell phone use. Now, they did not have them use a cell phone. Well, how would you do a controlled experiment like this? First of all, what I'm about to say is so unethical, it's not even funny. But let's say that you, um, they were doing a clinical trial. Again, unethical, but what I'm about to say is. So you had a person and you um, took a picture of their brain and then you had them use the cell phone over the course of let's say five six years and throughout that course of time every every quarter or every few months you took a picture of their brain to see if there was any mass that accumulated well do I need to say it obviously why that again is unethical simply because you are having them do an experiment with the understanding that you're expecting to see some type of a mass on their brain oh no 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 brain -o. No, no bueno. Oh, that's terrible. No bueno. That's not very good. Okay, but here, all they did was ask them about the cell phone. And that's why nowadays you hear that they're saying that there's some um, 
that there's some correlation or connection between cell phone use and um, um, brain tumors, well, the reality is how exactly do they test that because they might have the after results, but they don't have the before results. So how can you establish cause and effect if you don't know how it started or what the brain looked like prior to the development of the tumor or the cancer? So here... In reference to this particular question, specific to what they said here, um, it's observational. They asked about the use. They did not tell them to use the phone. So this is exactly what I was saying. Again, unethical. So now let's look at number 48. Okay, so they're asking us right here to determine um, if this um, is observational or experimental. Okay, so don't see a treatment imposed, so a treatment is not imposed. At some point, my S's will look like S's. Don't wait for it, people, though. Okay, it said they followed them from infancy um, to sixth grade. Oh, my gosh, I can't spell. I've got to change that word, infancy. Okay, it's changed. Um, so as I was saying before, this is observation because they followed them. So what is the explanatory and what is the response here? So what is the um, dependent variable, which is the response? I like to do that one first. I like to know what the results are. Because once I figure out what the results were or the output, then I can work my way backwards and go, okay, that explains those results. That explains the response. So the response variable here is you no, is the adult rating of the um, child's behavior. The explanatory, so what caused that response, what caused that result, the amount of child, um, the amount of time the child was in child daycare between the ages of, of birth to four and a half years. So this is why I like going backwards. It makes sense. This is what our response is. How, how did we get that response? That's how they got it based on the ideology that they're considering more time um, looking at the period of time a child's in daycare. Okay, next part, part C. Does the study show child care causes more aggression? Well, where do you see an experiment? Where do you see cause and effect? And if you don't see that, what's your answer? Right. Your answer is no, you cannot, because you need a controlled experiment, okay? It was not, so therefore you cannot imply cause and effect. So remember, a treatment has to be imposed for it to be a controlled experiment. It was not, so therefore you cannot say that daycare causes aggression. Now, you might at some point be able to say that there is a correlation but please remember, correlation does not imply causation. So in this one, no, there's no cause and effect. Now turn to the page, but before we talk about lurking variables, I want to um, make sure that you understand this as we are talking about our different definitions. Okay, this is a, a chapter that's heavy in definitions and vocabulary. So the bottom line is that, yeah, you use a vocabulary word, you must be able to explain it. So this is not just me saying this, this is the AP. Um, but the bottom line is if they say it, I say it too. So don't only, don't just use it, explain it. And instead of, um, so, I shouldn't say instead of, so don't just say it, explain it. And if you um, say the vocabulary, explain it. And if you forget the word, just choose to explain it in context. So instead of relying on the vocab, if you're not 100% sure, you won't take the hit as much if you literally explain the situation in context. In a few minutes, we're going to be talking about the idea of confounded variable, but I'm just going to also say it here. I'm working a little backwards here. Okay, also, when we're talking about 
um, situations, and here is confounded variables, which we'll talk about in a minute. We have to explain how it's confounded. Now, what is confounded? Well, before we talk about confounded, we need to talk about the idea of a lurking variable in general. What is a lurking variable? It's a variable that is not, explan it's not an explanatory or a response, I should put that on there, but it affects the relationship between the variables. So, remember that situation that we had about the ice cream, um, I'm sorry, summertime, and we had the summertime, and this is what it looks like. We had summer time, and summertime causes more ice cream sales to increase, and then that's an arrow, and then at the same time, summertime, you have more drownings. Now, here, what, as we look at this, we know that summertime is, the, as I look at this, it says summertime causes more drowning, summertime causes more ice cream sales. What is our lurking variable in this case? Our lurking variable is the heat. So that's what I'm talking about when I, when I refer to the heat is not a part of the explanatory, nor is it a part of the response. Let me put R-E-S there for the response. But it truly does um, affect the relationship between the variables. Now, this picture I just showed you was a picture of a confounded variable, very specific. Here, so confounded variables are two variables that are associated and affect the response. So here we can see that they are, okay, these are confounded, these two are associated, these two are associated, but the one thing that we can understand is that drowning does not cause ice cream sales to increase, nor does ice cream sales increasing um, um, affect drowning, okay? But we can see how this type of, this, summertime, we have, it causes the drowning, Summertime, it causes ice cream sales to increase. This is a prime example of lurking variable. Now, as I go to the bottom of my sheet, because it says C bottom, I wanted to remind myself. So I wanted to show this. This is an idea of um, how confounded variables work. And I gave you one example that I hope that you wrote at the bottom. Here, I want to give you one more. And actually, I have two more going on here. Okay, here, because I'm in summertime mode, obviously, guys. So here we have the sun causes ice cream sales to increase. We have the sun causes you to drink more water. Those are confounded variables. And the last one that I have here, obesity. Obesity causes respiratory issues. Obesity can cause cancer. And I hesitate when I say this because even though both of these are true, in some type of cancers they cause respiratory issues, but I'm looking at this as, um, I'm going to, this one is a special one. This one is what's called common response. And what does that mean? That means that here, cancer can also cause respiratory issues. Now, on the AP test, they use, they use this usually. They're looking at um, confounded. But, yeah, this is common response, too. And there is a connection between respiratory issues and cancer. But I want to go back and have you focus on the idea of just common um, on um, confounded variable. Here... Look at the two examples that I gave you here with the sun being hot and here with the summertime. Okay, bell rang. I got to quit. Bye-bye.